There's so much misinformation on the kind of tennis racket you should buy, I could do an entire series on just correcting all the mistruths and rumors. Hi, welcome to Dynamic Tennis Method. Today is video one of that series, The Truth About Heavy Rackets. Let's jump in. One of the most common rumors you'll hear at a tennis shop is that a racket like this one, with a relatively small head, kind of heavy, this is for good players only. The kind of racket that they'd recommend for you is something more like this. Now this racket's considerably lighter, with a much larger head size, a different balance, and a different material, generally a little bit stiffer, so that more power gets put into the ball from the same amount of racket at speed. Furthermore, they tend to recommend a racket like this if you have a chronic injury, such as tennis elbow or shoulder tendonitis. And today I want to explain to you why neither being a beginner or having chronic issues necessarily should lead you to getting a racket like this, and why a little bit more weight can be more advantageous and better for chronic injuries than you might think. This racket really appeals to one player and one player alone. I'm talking about people who are in their 70s, their 80s, even their 90s, and they need as light a racket as possible simply to be able to maneuver it through the air. The weight concentration is gonna be much more in the tip, which is gonna make it feel heavy anyway, but it's gonna be harder to accelerate. Have a look at this. I'm gonna balance the racket right here and watch what the two rackets do. The extra stiffness from a light, oversized racket is going to actually create a more trampoline effect, which is going to encourage a smaller, buntier stroke. You do not need a lot of strength to swing a racket effectively. It really doesn't take a whole lot of effort to simply lift the racket up and drop it. The real reason why people tend to struggle with racket weight isn't the amount of effort that it takes to swing the racket with gravity. It's the feeling of inertial momentum that they get from fighting against their own momentum. That chronic tension, that squeezing very tightly and needing to control every position of the racket and using your muscles to do all the swinging, that's where quite a few of the chronic injuries really occur and it's also what keeps beginners beginners. Now if you're using a relatively heavy racket and you're experiencing something like tennis elbow, or shoulder tendonitis, you might find a temporary relief from using a lighter racket. Now, that might make things feel better in the short term, but you're not really addressing the root problem. It's like having a broken leg and putting a little less pressure on it as opposed to actually fixing the leg. If you really want to overcome and heal from those problems, you have to learn a technique that allows you to relax and toss your racket with a minimum of excess tension against your own momentum and inertia. That's the only way that you'll ever be able to fully resolve these issues. Believe it or not, you can actually use a slightly heavier racket than the one that you're using, especially if you're using a very light racket, and get more power with less effort from your muscles. The amount of weight that I recommend is about 10 ounces or so for people between the weight of 100 and 150 pounds, 11 ounces or so for people that are over 150 pounds, and 12 ounces and up for people that are exceptionally big and strong, like 200 pounds or more. As you start to get better at tennis, you're going to naturally add even more weight than what you're playing with because that weight is essentially free power if you use the momentum correctly. Now, of course, I'm not saying you should go out and get the heaviest racket on the market or take your racket and put lead tape all around the hoop like Djokovic. Obviously, there's a limit. You don't want to use a baseball bat to play tennis. However, you might want to challenge yourself and see if you can add a little bit more weight and then start using that weight as part of your game instead of fighting against the initial momentum and working around that issue. You really want to learn how to release into your strokes if you want to both get to the next level and also prevent or heal yourself from chronic injuries. So that's it. I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to support this channel, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, share it with your friends. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.